morning everyone um, you're all welcome to this session whereby we'll be solving um, this problem like right here in front of you um, some of you may be familiar with the equation why some are not so this is a typical example of a back titration problem take your time to go through it I will leave it in the screen for some time so that you can go through it oh let me give let me give you some 30 seconds to go through the equation Alright, so I think everybody has gone through the equation. Um, now, like I said, this is a typical uh, back titration problem in which you have an analyte whose concentration is to be known. But for you to know the concentration of this analyte, you decide to react the analyte with an excess reagent it could be a base it could be an acid as well as it could be any other thing so looking at it or looking at this question we could say the excess reagent is hydrochloric acid our analyte is the carbonate what we are looking for is the carbonate we don't know the concentration of the carbonate Yes, we don't know the concentration of the carbonate, but we know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. So it is the excess reagent in this case. Now, for every back titration problem, unlike a direct titration, you are going to have two equations. One of the equation is where you are reacting the analyte and the uh, reagent the, 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 the reagent of known amount of known concentration now this equation is the principal equation and it is here this reaction one this reaction one here is the principal equation in back titration because it it is the basic equation and it uh, contains the analyte and i said the analyte is calcium carbonate so in every back titration problem you are going to come across identify the analyte and identify the excess reagent in this case it is hydrochloric acid because at the end of the reaction some of the hydrochloric acid is left trapped in form of calcium carbonate so this calcium carbonate at the end here is formed from hydrochloric acid calcium there is spectator ion so we'll not talk much about it but just know that some of the HCl or hydrochloric acid is trapped in calcium chloride now the second reaction represents the reaction between that excess reagent that was uh, left and another reagent of known concentration so in this case the the reagent is sodium hydroxide they gave you the concentration of sodium hydroxide as 0 0.1 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.01 molar something of that sort uh, let me see it's, it's 0 0.1 molar so we know the concentration so now we the second equation is coming from reaction of the excess hydrochloric acid and a third reagent or a second reagent of known concentration you see i wrote two equations they are basically the same because remember i said 
the HCl that is left or the hydrochloric acid left in this reaction one that has not reacted is trapped in the form of calcium carbonate calcium chloride sorry so instead of saying HCl plus sodium hydroxide you could still say calcium chloride plus sodium hydroxide to give calcium hydroxide plus sodium chloride and this calcium hydroxide at the end here is the main uh, product that will indicate that the reaction has taken place because it is a white precipitate so those two equations are the same you can either put hydrochloric acid which is the excess or you put calcium chloride all of them are excess reagents so the excess solid is formed from hydrochloric acid now if those equations are well understood we now have to go to the solving part and uh, in the solving part it will just be uh, application of normal uh, tit titrimetry uh, knowledge so first we have to get the initial number of moles of the excess reagent that is the hydrochloric acid and the initial number of moles will simply be the concentration times the volume the concentration here is the molar molar concentration that is the molarity times the volume the volume was given in cm cube so we have to convert it to dm cube or liters we are converting it to liters by multiplying or oh, sorry by dividing dividing by 1000 when we do that calculation you have 0 0.02 mole so initially initially without any reaction taking place the number of mole of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.02 now if we know the initial number of mole we can get the excess number of moles the excess number of mole of HCl is that number of mole that were left after reaction with calcium carbonate and to get that we're going to use the second reaction the second reaction is a simple acid base reaction to form salt and water of course and we see that the ratio is the ratio of the acid is one and that of the base two is one So it's a 1 is to 1 ratio. Now since the ratio is 1 is to 1, it implies that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid is equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So the number, the excess number of moles of hydrochloric acid will just be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, which is 0 0.1 times 20 divided by 1000 liters. Which is equals to 0 0.002 mole. Now, at this level, we are now supposed to look for the number of mole of hydrochloric acid that actually reacted in reaction one, or that actually reacted with calcium carbonate, because not all reacted with calcium carbonate. So, to look for that number of mole, we are going to take the initial number of moles which was 0 0.02 and subtract from the excess number of moles which is 0 0.002 moles when we subtract and we do that calculation what we're going to have is 0 0.018 mole so that those that is the number of mole of um hydrochloric acid that reacted with calcium carbonate hope you guys are following the actual number of moles that reacted was 0 0.018 so now after knowing the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with calcium carbonate we can use their stoichiometric coefficients in order to calculate the mass or the number of moles of calcium carbonate 
and we'll use reaction one so from reaction one right here you you see that two uh, two moles of ACL are reacting with one mole of calcium carbonate the stoichiometric coefficients are two and one so two more one more and from there we can conclude that the number of moles of calcium carbonate is equal to half the number of moles of hydrochloric acid right so um, also you also you can say that two moles of calcium carbonate are reacting with uh, or is equals to one mole of uh, hydrochloric acid so two moles of HCl or hydrochloric acid is reacting with uh, one mole of calcium carbonate so from there we have number of moles of calcium carbonate as half into 0 0.018 mole which is 0 0.009 mole so that's the number of mole of calcium carbonate that's, that's the number of mole of calcium carbonate that reacted with hydrochloric acid so it gave us the molecular weight of calcium carbonate as 100 and we know that mass is equals to number of moles times molecular weight of course this formula is not to be forgotten it's one of the basic formulas so our mass is 0 0.009 times 100 grams per mole which gives us 0 0.9 grams so you see that the, the actual mass of the calcium the impure calcium carbonate that will react with the excess hydro with the uh, hydrochloric acid which was placed in excess is 0 0.9 it means that 0 0.1 because at the beginning of the reaction we had one gram of impure calcium carbonate if is that the calcium carbonate contain no impurities then all the one gram would have reacted but we're seeing that only 0 0.9 grams are going to react so if 0 0.9 gram is reacting it means 0 0.1 gram is made up of impurities so impurities make up 0 0.1 gram of the calcium carbonate hope that is clear and if uh, if that's the case then we can be able to calculate the percentage purity which is the mass of pure compound divided by mass of impure compound times 100 the mass of our pure compound is 0 0.9 grams as gotten from the calculations uh, lit, uh, that we did so while the mass of impure compound is 1.00 grams that's the mass at the beginning that we reacted so when we multiply that by 100 you you have uh, 90 percent so this is a good uh, the calcium carbonate is a good salt though it has 10 percent of impurities but 90 percent purity is good so the percent purity of the so the calcium carbonate or of the carbonate is 90 percent so that's the answer and looking at the options the best one is d okay